It's Adam here for PC Monitors and today we're going to be taking a look at the OSD on-screen display menu system of the ViewSonic VP2780 4K. The OSD is controlled by touch sensitive buttons at the lower right region of the monitor. If you press the first button there, you get the main menu up and that also acts as the back button. Press the button labelled 2 there and it gives you a quick input select menu. Third button along there, which is the down arrow, if you press that once, it brings up the blue light filter, which is a low blue light setting of the monitor. Now, this is labelled a bit confusingly because with that set to 100 at the moment, it's actually completely off. Um, the filter's off, so the monitor is as it would be normally. But if you lower this, and you can lower it in increments of 1, um, it starts to decrease the blue light output from the monitor. So it basically enhances the effect of the filter. I probably shouldn't have put that all the way down because it does take a while to get it back up again now. But um, that's looked at in a bit more detail in the review. The fourth button along there is the up arrow and that allows you to access the user settings menu which we'll come on to um, in a little bit and then of course there's a power button which is also touch sensitive and that simply turns the monitor on or off and there's the power LED there so you can see it's a fairly unusual design it's got a kind of a, a dark blue strip LED so now we'll take a look at the main menu um, as you can see already, it's kind of quite it has quite a retro look to it. Really, it's uh, it's not very 2015 at all um, compared to on some monitors. It looks a bit sort of basic, but that that doesn't really change the the functionality contained within the uh, the menu system. So first first bit contrast brightness. You can see it's you know it's quite a simple layout. It's not not too confusing. Um, that, yeah, so that lets you can change the contrast or brightness level of the screen. Next there is input select, which I, I showed you earlier. There is audio adjust, which lets you change the volume or mute the uh, audio from the 3.5mm audio output. Um, this, this model doesn't have any integrated speakers, so that isn't controlling them. There is a colour adjust, which is discussed in the calibration section of the review, and that has various different presets you can select there. And if you select user colour, as, as you'd imagine, that lets you manually change the red, green and blue colour channels. There is information which provides some basic information about the monitor such as the current operating resolution, the refresh rate, um, the serial number and the ViewSonic's website just in case you can't work out that it's www.viewsonic.com Next there's manual image adjust which quite a lot of the uh, useful settings are found. Um, you can activate the dynamic contrast feature, which is explored in the review. You can change the response time, which again is explored in the review. Um, I, I definitely recommend keeping that uh, set to advanced. Um, actually, I say keeping that set to advanced, I think it's set by to standard by default, so advanced is uh, definitely the optimal setting in my view. There is an aspect ratio setting which is greyed out here because I'm running the monitor in the native resolution. Um, this is something that's discussed a bit more in the interpolation and scaling section of the review. But I'm just gonna I'm just gonna set the monitor to um, full HD, and then I'll be able to show you that um, that setting. Another thing that's mentioned in the review, you can see in the resolutions list here, there's actually um, D DCI 4K resolution uh, 4096 by 2160 on the monitor. Um, this monitor doesn't actually have that many pixels, 
but that, that's just there for compatibility reasons. Um, you might want to be using that for editing certain true 4K content, for example. So it's kind of quite kind of useful option to have there. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to be showing you the full HD resolution, so I can show you how the um, aspect ratio settings work. So there we go. The everything's a lot bigger now. So now the aspect ratio um, section is available to me. So full screen, which is what I've got it on now, means that the an interpolation process is used to fill the uh, whatever resolution you're using to the to use all of the pixels of the screen. There's a one-to-one -one mode, which ensures that only 1920 by 1080 pixels will be used in this case, and there's a big black border for the rest of the screen. There's 4x3, which isn't applicable to this uh, particular resolution because it isn't a 4x3, uh, it's a 16x9 resolution, so everything on here just looks squashed. But if you were running a 4x3 um, resolution, then that, that mode would be uh, one you could use. And uh, let's put it back to the native resolution now. And I might as well just show you now um, and see how big the, the icons are at the moment. This is full HD with no scaling on this 27 inch monitor. And if I put that onto the UHD resolution, you can see how absolutely minuscule the icons become. Um, I'm not using any scaling here which I don't think many users would find particularly practical because text is very small. Um, I mean, I can just about cope with it myself, but I have very good eyesight, and even then I feel that using some sort of scaling is preferable. Next, pick, um, next in the manual image adjust menu, there is an overscan option, which is just a compatibility option for... Um, various older games consoles, for example, which may want to use overscan. So if you're connected to a PC and you select overscan, it just does exactly what it should do. It overscans the image and it runs off the side of the screen. So for PC users, there's no need to use that, I don't think. There's eco mode, which essentially just sets the brightness to a pre-adjusted value designed to lower the out, um, power output of the monitor. There's Optimize, which is pretty dim. Conserve, which is even dimmer. Um, but of course, I mean, this is no different to manually adjusting the brightness yourself um, and, and, and choosing a fairly low setting there, because that, that's, that's all it's doing to save power. There's a, a gamma setting here, which is greyed out because I think I've left the monitor in yeah user color um, if I put it on native which is what I actually use in the in the review for the test settings then I should be able to show you the gamma options there so there it has gamma between 1.8 and 2.6 in increments of 0.2 um, as explored in the review the measured gamma didn't quite correspond to these numbers but it certainly does change the, the gamma, and it's useful to be able to have different um, hardware gamma settings on a monitor. There's multi-picture, which allows you to change the picture and picture and picture by picture functionality of the monitor. And I'm not actually going to be able to show you that, because I've only got one PC source connected to the monitor, so I can't actually show you exactly how this would work. But I, I can run through some of the things for you. So there's... Quad, quad windows at the top there and that allows you to simultaneously display input from four different sources so each source will display as a small window taking up a quarter of the screen and essentially can display it up, up to uh, the full HD resolution for each square so I'm sure that could be uh, something that some users would like to use there are also some different picture by picture settings and also picture in picture.
Next, there are some more presets um, called View Mode, which are explored in the calibration section of the view. Um, and you can see there the standard game, movie, web, text, and mono. There's the blue light filter setting, which I've already taken a look at. And then there's the setup menu. And this has some, some further settings for you to fiddle about with. There's a, a language select function there. There's a resolution notice, which just puts a fairly annoying resolution uh, notice up on the screen to tell you that um, 3840 by 2160 is the optimal resolution of the, the screen. And if you're not running that resolution, it'll pop this notice up for you. So I've turned that off because I find it pretty annoying. Um, you can change the position of the OSD, the timeout period, which is something I really should have done before starting this video because it's dis disappearing after only 15 seconds of not pressing buttons, which isn't very good when you're trying to record a video. Um, I've set that to 60, se uh, 60 seconds now, a minute of inactivity, which is better. You can basically enable or disable a transparency effect, OSD background there. There's an OSD pivot option, which you'd use if you're using the monitor in portrait mode, and that'll make sure that the OSD is readable and in the correct orientation for you. There's auto power off, which automatically um, it will automatically turn the monitor off if no signal is detected for, I believe it's three minutes. Well, it was on some older ViewSonic models, I'm not sure if it's still three minutes, but uh, uh, power indicator, and that enables or disables this blue light there, power LED. So if I turn that off, there we go, if, if that's annoying you, you can turn that off. There is Save As, which will save all of your settings as one of three user mode presets, which, as I've shown you, can be quickly accessed using the up arrow before you've even accessed the main menu system. So I'll just press the up arrow there, and I've got my test settings in user mode 1, and in user mode 2 I've got some very effective low blue light settings which I don't use for testing the monitor but I just use for my own viewing pleasure in the evening when it's um, a good time to um, try and cut out the blue light because it can affect your sleep hormones and all that and finally on this menu there is DisplayPort 1.2 which you should leave enabled unless you're using a system that doesn't actually support DisplayPort 1.2. So that's again, that's just a, another compatibility feature of the monitor there. And if you do happen to disable that, then if you're using DisplayPort on the monitor, you will be restricted to 30 hertz at the native resolution. Finally, there is a memory recall setting which sets everything in the menu to the factory defaults. And there you have it. That was the OSD on-screen display menu system of the ViewSonic VP2780 4K. Be sure to check out the review on PCMonitors.info.